Would you eat meat grown in your lab? Last December, a world first was created when a Singaporean restaurant sold a box of chicken nuggets that were completely lab-grown. So-called so cultured meat is the future, and means that we won't have to kill animals for food in the years to come. At least that's what the MP Anthony Brown argues in his article for The Spectator this week. I'm joined now by Dr. Mark Cotter from Cambridge and also co-founder of Meatable, a company which is on track to produce cultured pork in just a couple of years. Dr. Cotter, welcome to Spectator TV. Can you start by explaining to the layman what cultured meat means? Hi, Cindy. Thank you very much for having me on the show. So cultured meat is really the concept of creating real meat um, in, in a lab. Um, removing the requirement of large-scale and anim animal farming. Can you explain what the life process of that looks like? How how do you grow lab meat in a lab? So I think uh, we've seen sort of meat substitutes uh, become popular in the past couple of years, and these are often based on plant-based sources. Um, cultured meat really wants to create the real thing, um, the real thing uh, which is, consists mainly of muscle uh, tissue and, uh, and fat tissue, um, and remove the sort of requirement of, of animal farming do this actually in, in a lab. And the way that um, this works is that you use <clears throat> bioreactors, which are you know, culture conditions uh, um, that um, have the cells floating in 3D and, and uh, allowing them to grow up. And then um, you want to put them into um, molds, essentially, um, that uh, allow them to grow muscle bundles uh, and, and fat tissue. I think that would be the ideal way of doing this. Sounds very simple. It's actually very, very difficult. Um, and, uh, and there's been sort of slow um, pro progress until more recently when, when things really sped up. Well, that brings me to my next question, actually, which is how far away is this technology? I think we made some leaps uh, um, recently, uh, and I, I can I can tell you about uh, the company that I'm involved in, which is called Meetable. Um, essentially, it came out um, of an invention. It was created uh, um, based on an invention that uh, my academic laboratory um, did together with Professor Ludovic's laboratory at the Stem Cell Institute in Cambridge. Um, and what this allowed us to do is to really make this process of creating these fat cells and these and these um, and these muscle cells very very efficiently. That's been really the bottleneck. So being able to create um, specific cell types is not only a problem uh, for cultured meat. It's also a problem in other fields like medicine. You know, I'm my be my background is a medical doctor, so so that's. That was my primary interest. But we happened to discover a process <clears throat> that is very, very efficient and scalable. Uh, and so the idea uh, of Meetable is to, to develop this process to create these uh, products, um, meat products uh, at scale. And how far are we away? I believe we're going to see um, first prototypes um, on display um, this year. Uh, and I think there'll be there'll be a small production um, in the next two years or so. So I think we're very close. Uh, the, the, this field has made a huge leap. So by the end of the year, we could see it in supermarkets on, on the shelves next to the vegetarian options, this real meat, but that hasn't been, an animal hasn't been killed in the process. No, I, 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 I refer to a prototype. So it's a small <laughs> selective production that, you know, showcases this and allows the regulators to approve it. Very interesting. And are there parts of um, meats that you can't replicate so much? Uh, I'm thinking, for example, um, things like ribs, like the bone part of things. Is the meat that you create, are they going to be just lumps of meat, essentially? So, so all those other parts of an animal, presumably you can't replicate that. Look, what bioengineering um, has provided us uh, within the last um, 10 years is really tools to, to really think, think big. Uh, and I do think that it's possible to actually create something that looks like a bone, uh, um, 3D printing of calcium, etc. cetera. Um, but um, let's be pragmatic. The first product uh, that um, you want to bring into 
the market is obviously something that's very simple to produce. And the simplest products, uh, I would say, are minced meat, sausages, uh, and things like that. But I think that already has the potential of a, a real step change uh, in terms of how we think about meat, uh, how we think about the origin of meat. Um, and also it allows us to sort of open up uh, a future where you know we are res less reliant uh, on 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 the on the resources that really put a big strain uh, on on our on our planet. Yes, and and let's come to some of those pros in in just a second because people might be wondering you know why bother. But first of all, do you think that this tastes like meat? Um, I mean, I know that biologically it is, but are there parts? of an animal's growing experience you all around the world you hear about you know grass-fed beef or whatever it is part of the animal's diet or exercise that makes the meat taste different can you do anything about that when you've only got the dna well i do think if you th uh, that uh, you actually have even greater flexibility um if you have something in an industrial process so it's much less left to whatever happens to the outside. I think what I'm trying to say here is once you apply an engineering approach to biology, and I think this happens now broadly uh, across uh, various spectra, um, then then your, your tool set, your abilities actually increase and you can do things that you may have not thought about. Um, I can think of some really strange things like um, creating creating meat from different species uh, and yeah. having it in one. Um, so, so fine tuning a bit like, you know, a good wine uh, or, <laughs> or you could also, you know, Oh, uh, what, like a, like a meat with a DNA of a pig and a, and a, and a cow and then seeing what that would taste like. That's right. To having, having those cells together in, 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 in one, in one, um, you know, piece of meat essentially. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I think we'll have to get, get viewers to email in on their thoughts about that and what combinations of meat sure. people might be interested. I think we're talking about the future. At this point in yes. time, I think uh, um, this technology has, has um, a chance to address some of the sort of real pain points, in, in, including, including the reason why, you know, we're sat at, uh, stuck in Zoom boxes at the moment uh, and uh, not being able to travel freely. I think, uh, you know, intensive farming um, comes with the risk of, uh, of viruses um, transmitting from, from, from animals to human. Yes, absolutely. And can you talk a little bit about the benefits that you see with, with this approach? Is it, one day we won't be, have to kill animals for farming ever, is that right? Yes, absolutely. I think that's uh, one of the drivers. Animal wel welfare co co uh, considerations, I think, um, are, are top of my personal uh, agenda as well. Um, although I do like meat, I do eat meat, so I don't want to sort of pretend that I'm uh, um, a vegetarian uh, at this moment in time. Um, the second aspect, of course, is, um, you know, the conditions under which animals uh, are, are, you know, raised uh, uh, and, and, and slaughtered. I think here um, having a, an alternative is, is, is really, really important. Uh, another aspect is um, the environmental impact uh, and also the medical impact uh, of the current way of producing meat. So we all heard about the use of antibiotics um, in farms and what that means is that um, a lot of antibiotics are used um, across um, across the globe, uh, which don't help patients, so to speak, but make bugs become more resistant. Uh, and we feel the effects of that um, in, in the clinic. We have a, a, an increase in, in, in bugs and in strains that cannot be treated with uh, the regular set of antibiotics. So I think it's key one key aspect of cultured meat is to be able to sort of reduce the broad application of, of antibiotics. As a doctor, that's of course something that's uh, that's really important. And and then there's this other aspect that that I think people are becoming more and more aware of, which is really the greenhouse gas uh, that uh, that is uh, emissions that are associated, especially with uh, cattle. 
And uh, in fact, I think it's one of the largest single contributors contributors to to greenhouse gases. Um, and so having an alternative in this space, I think is also something um, that uh, that is very valuable. And finally, we all know that meat's not always healthy. Uh, and uh, and that's sometimes because of, you know, s- certain fats that are in, 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 in meats. And if you, let's go back to this engineering approach. What you, could, what, what you could essentially do is, you know, you could take out some of those um, non-healthy, um, you know, substances that, uh, that, that we see. Although I think, again, we're talking more about the future. Yes, of course. Um, and is all of this safe? You know, when we're co- talking about um, GM foods, for example, a lot of people's concerns are that it's not safe. And what you're doing is not just mod- is not modifying genetics, obviously, but you're recreating it and you're growing meat, and which could be the main basis of our diet. Is that a safe thing to do to be consuming? I mean, let's be honest. Uh, when we culture meat, it's an artificial process. Uh, it's, it's a synthetic process. Um, the question then becomes, um, is the is the product safe or not? And that is essentially so. So you know, I think uh, um, we just need to recognise that this is not something that happens without you know an industrial machine behind it. Now, the 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 good thing is that um, we have a lot of experience. Um, you know, our society with regulating. Um, aspects of food and aspects of health. You know, there's a system that checks every drug that is developed. There's a system that uh, looks at every f- new food uh, that, that's being put out. And, and, I, and I do trust that um, the, the robustness uh, of, of these systems. Um, and so I do think uh, if you ever want to create a product that can be used, it has to, it has to jump all the hoops and uh, and all the checks um, that uh, that are required to make it a safe product. So I wouldn't feel comfortable at all um, if we sort of decide if if there would be someone who to decide to go forward with a product that isn't safe. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the regulators because in in Anthony Brown's piece for the Spectator this week, he talks about how the Singaporean regulators have given the green light for something like this. But in the EU, for example, there's a bit more reluctance. And he mentions that in Brussels and Washington, lobbyists from uh, the farming industry have made have are making efforts so that the word meat can only be applied to meat that comes from animals being slaughtered. I mean, you must be coming up against quite a lot of opposition inertia. Yeah, I, I, I do think if you come with something that's a very re- disruptive idea, and by no way, in way I want to claim that this was my idea. I think there's a whole field out there. <laughs> but if you're part of something that's novel, uh, you, you are going to ruffle feathers uh, and, and, and cause some pushback. And I think some of that pushback is um, is good because it um, basically means that you have to up your game. You have to show uh, that uh, what what you generate, what you produce, is actually better uh, in 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 so many aspects. Um, I think there's also a little a little bit of sort of fear uh, in certain pockets. Um, um, What's interesting, though, is that um, if you look at uh, the sentiment of, of, of the users, you know, the man of the street and the women on the street, that we can see a real swing away from, you know, um, from this is artificial, we don't want to touch it, to, some, to, to a sort of new mindset uh, where people are aware of all the problems that our current system has. Uh, uh, and where people decide to become vegan or vegetarian, not because they don't like meat, but because they don't like the process uh, and, and, and the animal sort of welfare aspects of it. And, and this particular sort of, um, you know, group of people, which is, which is large, um, I believe um, is very in favour for, for, for a meat alternative, even though... Uh, it is, it is, you know, something that comes out of the lab. Yes, well, as a fellow vegetarian, I can very much get behind that. And I'm intrigued by this idea of the hybrid sausage. <laughs> Dr. Mark Cotter, thank you very much for joining Spectator TV. 
Thank you so much. Yeah.